watch and learn. Hey everybody. So tonight I want to discuss Enya's Shepherd Moons. I always for some reason think this record came out in the late 80s, but that's not possible because Watermark came out in the late 80s. This came out I think in 90 or 91. This is like this is like Enya's classic period. This is when, you know, like these are the Watermark days and the Shepherd Moon days. And Shepherd Moons, it has like Caribbean Blues on here and uh, No Holly for Miss Quinn is on here. Book of Days, After Ventus, which is occasionally sort of typoed as Affer Ventus, Ventus, sorry. And like I said, this is, this is an easy record to love because there isn't a bad song on here. Not that any of Enya's sort of subsequent releases would have any bad songs on there because they don't think Enya is one of those songwriters well, her and Roma are any of those, those two of those songwriters that are capable of writing a bad song. I didn't love And Winter Came, but I felt that that was mainly due to the fact that there were just a, felt like a quick few Enya originals on there, and then they were sort of sandwiched in with a Christmas EP. So I didn't love that, but it isn't that I didn't think, you know, Trains and Winter Rains or My My Times, Time Flies weren't rad, because they were. I just felt that that record was more about Christmas, and it, it should have been more like an EP, a Christmas EP with a couple B-sides or some shit. But this record, this is coming from Enya's classic period. This is the Caribbean Blue Days. And this record is absolutely flawless. For anybody who's been a long time fan of Enya's, there are a couple records that nobody ever messes with. I mean, A Day Without Rain comes, well no, actually, you know what? Nobody really from her fan base is going to mess with any of her releases. I didn't love Only Time, the collection, the second box set. I found it was sort of just a soulless cash grab. But that had less to do with her and more to do with her label. And I'm trying to think, have, has any ever released anything that I didn't completely love? No, I don't think she has. Dark Sky Island had so much attitude and so much atmosphere. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, here, here I am. This is from her classic period. But then it occurred to me, it's sort of like Enya's had like an endless classic period. Dark Sky Island. Like, every song on there was just as important and as an integral part, an important and integral part of Enya's discography as anything off Shepherd Moons or the Celts or A Day Without Rain or whatever for that matter. So, I guess this has kind of took a turn. This record is just as flawless as anything Enya's released. But this does have Caribbean Blue on it. So, now I'm kind of lost. I don't have anything else to say. I love this record because I absolutely love Enya. And the woman hasn't released a bad record. And they do need to get moving on a new record because Nicky, he isn't getting any younger. And the only person he produces is Enya. And Dark Sky Island, if memory serve, serves, came out back in 2015. And here we are halfway through 2023. That's not good. But look, I'm going to stop. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a few minutes while I attempted to discuss how epic Shepherd Moons was when I realized that it's just as epic as everything else Enya has released. So thank you while I discussed this. If you liked this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But most importantly, don't forget that the world is a better place because you are in it. And I feel sort of lost now. Have a good night.